this is Dawn with Meemaw's Crafting, and I want to say howdy from Texas. <laughs> I had somebody um, mention that I'm probably a Southern girl. I wasn't born in the South, but I came here as soon as I could, and I moved here, um, I think it was like four or five. But yeah, some people say I have an accent. And when I go back to Ohio, I remember them saying, man, you have that Southern drawl. <laughs> so yes, I'm a Texan girl. Um, I was born in Ohio, but I got here as soon as I can. So yes, I'm a Texan. <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess this is considered a podcast. Somebody will have to correct me. I've been watching a lot of videos and they've been saying podcasts and I don't know what the difference is between a podcast and a video. So we'll call this podcast number one. <laughs> I don't know, but um, if, I'm, if I'm doing it wrong, please let me know. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show you some of the things that I've worked on, some of the things finished, some of the things I'm um, working on now, some of the things maybe I have planned, um, and some other stuff that's going on, and some acquisitions and things. Uh, the first thing I've been working on, I told you last time, well, you know, in my introduction that I was thinking about opening an Etsy store and I had actually sold things, not on Etsy, but actually in person, like at craft, uh, craft bazaars and stuff, um, maybe about four or five years ago. And so I was thinking, well, I can start with those things and get a bunch of them. And I'm actually thinking of going, um, I do paparazzi jewelry and am, op uh, am doing a big event. Um, it's called Geek End in Kilgore, Texas, if you're around. Um, I do the paparazzi jewelry, but my daughter's wanting to do painting and stuff. And I says, well, let me do some crocheting and we can um, get another little booth, you know, for her painting and you can add in some of my crocheting stuff. And if I sell some, that's great. So I was thinking of different things I can sell. What was real popular before was like little face scrubbies. And I use these um, for, um, well, of course, washing my face, but also I use them for makeup removal. I don't use much makeup, but when I do, I definitely, you know, use these. And they're, I usually make about five of them. They're just a really basic, basic round pattern out of 100% cotton. I usually do um, like five of them together. And I used to put them, if I can find it, in a little baggie like this, a little organza bag. Uh, but I saw really cute um, things from another Etsy store where they put like little paper labels around. And I thought, oh, that would be neat because you could actually see the colors. If they're in the organza bags, um, it's a little harder to see. And then I also do ones that are a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see. Um, and it's more like a puff type of stitch. And they're a little thicker and they're really good um, for scrubbing. They have a lot more power, you know. <laughs> Another thing that was really popular and so I thought I'd go ahead and make some more are the little dish, they can use them as dishcloths or washcloths. Um, there's my stitch. And they really hold up well. They're sort of thicker. And they, I have one, sorry. I have one that, this is actually mine that I like use all the time to wash my face. And it's held up really, really good over the years. And I've had this thing several years, but they hold up really good. And then I also do soap savers. And I've been doing these for a long time, maybe about 10 years. And I guess they're getting really popular now, but you put your little soap, uh, scraps in there and use them and I put a little drawstring bag they're like a little drawstring bag you can hang them up dry them off some people put a whole bar of soap in but I made um, a bunch of different different colors you know and then I also made some bigger ones because at the time I was selling these I had a special order because the lady made her own soaps and so we had to make bigger ones because she made bigger bars of soaps uh, oh, another thing I'm just thinking about the design. I just sort of got some acrylic yarn and I um, am going to get little like carabiners to put on here. But this is hand sanitizer and this can be clipped on to your bag. 
and this was just my very first one that I was just messing around with to see if it would work and hey it worked but I actually made them let me grab some um, in cotton I haven't put the the buttons on yet sorry how oh dog but uh, I made them in cotton and did a bunch of different ones you know I have pink and they're hundred percent cotton I like these ones better than the acrylic I like these a lot better so those are some things that I'm working on right now that you know I'm trying every time I get a spare minute I'll like you know whip some up and I'm also trying to figure out maybe a chapstick um, holder similar to the hand sanitizer I haven't really I usually make my own patterns and just you know like do it until I'm, I'm happy um, so I don't know yet I'm still working on that so I'm not even gonna show you cuz um, yeah I'm, um, yeah I'm not happy with that one yet anyway um, I was gonna show you I talked about my um, corner to corner Afghan that I've been working on geez for more than a year it's just I'm being lazy and I have other priorities but I wanted to share you know it, it was this and this is my very first corner to corner I ever did and I still haven't finished it I've done a lot of corner to corner since then but this is you know and I I still am working it's gonna be more like a little lap lap gan kind of thing you know not too too not too too big um, but it's gonna be this is red heart super saver and I was gonna do the gray as the trim and that's also red heart super saver this is from you know geez two years ago I think they might still offer the yarn it was Icelandic Icelandic was the color I have no idea because I bought it like more than a year ago it's been like a year and a half so that is a work in progress that you may or may not see get finished <laughs> um, another work in progress is my baby blank I mean my granddaughter's blanket and I have put everything together I have gotten just a small edging and I need to put the border but it fits on a twin size bed but it's a little big <laughs> which I guess is a good thing it is humongous <laughs> and I still have to um, do all my ends and everything in and I, I did a quick little edging to, well, the beginning of a border, and then I'm going to put a little ruffle border on there. And I put them together with a different kind of join. I don't remember, I saw somebody do it on the internet, and it was fun. It's like, um, well, I'll show you. So it's like a chain that goes inside each other. It's. A little daunting to do because you have to take out your hook every time you chain the three take off your hook wrap it and put your hook back in do a um, single crochet go back over and it's yeah it's just a bunch of taking the hook out so it's not as fast as other things but I think for her it's good because it's a little bit more solid um, it's not just one uh, piece of yarn you know sewed together with just one piece of yarn it's actually a chain and so she is five years old she's gonna be six and so she's gonna give it a lot of you know tugging it and probably taking it from room to room even though it's supposed to be for her bed but yeah so I hope she loves it and it turned out so pretty I love it I, I just I am definitely gonna do another corner to corner piecing project again because that was fun I like to do the smaller pieces and put them together that's why I don't think I finished the Afghan yet because I have this big thing you know and when you, you you go back and forth and it's just so boring and these were so fun to do and this is the first um, changing of color that I've ever done on a corner to corner but they were so fun to do because they were just little squares and you got done so fast and you get finished and okay I'll do the next one and you can take the project with you that big one I couldn't take anywhere so 
So I will take some pictures when it is completely done and let you see, but I, I'm actually going to give this to her this next weekend for her birthday. So, and I'm thinking if I have enough of the purple, I am going to make her baby doll a blanket. I don't know if I'm gonna do the heart um, or just do like a plain, you know, maybe a corner to corner baby blanket, little tiny one for her 18 inch baby. I think it's 18 inch baby. It's one of those like um, American girl knockoffs. So I might be doing that if I have enough time. I also have to make a cake for her, a unicorn cake, which um, yeah, I'm gonna have to make, um, and 48 cupcakes. So I have a lot of stuff going this week. But yes, look how big this is. Oh my goodness, this is so big. <laughs> But this, thank goodness, hopefully today it will be finished. And I started it the second and today is the 22nd. So it's taken me 20 days to pretty much get this done. And I will fit, be finished with it today. Next, whoo. Oh, next I found something. I told you I was gonna clean out my craft room. I'm not getting very far in it because I've been so busy. But I found this from like a long time ago. And this, I did some granny squares. And I have no idea, this is at least 10 years old. I have a bunch of them, and you can tell by the colors. It's when the dusty rose and the country blue. <laughs> and I think I had this yarn like years and years and years before I even attempted this. Because I think I had originally made these. And I didn't like the way they sat. Um, as I told you, sometimes I don't really go off of a pattern. I sort of just do it and, you know, see if I like it. Well, somehow this got really wonky. And I do not like to block that much. Um, and I think I made these like years, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And I didn't like them. So what I think I was doing was frogging them and turning them into these. I'm not sure. I, I have no idea. But I have about 18, I don't know if you can see the 18 of the granny squares. And I still have a few of these that I can frog um, and use the yarn. I do like the center though. I don't remember how I did the center, but I liked it. <laughs> so I have that. And I guess what I'm going to do, sorry, the rustling. I guess I might take these and make them into maybe baby doll blankets. I'm not sure because this is the Red Heart Super Saver from years ago. And believe me, there is a big difference. This is so rough. It's just, I would never use this. Uh, of course, I would never use this for anything against your skin because it's awful. I would never use it for a baby blanket. But I was like, maybe a baby doll blanket? I don't know. But if you have any, I mean, this, this yarn is at least, you know, 10, 12, 15 years old. It is so rough. Um, I don't know what they did. Um, and I'm glad they did. They changed the, the uh, feeling of it because the new Red Heart Super Saver, it's tough. It's rough for than most, but it's nothing like this. So the old Red Heart Super Saver, super rough. Ugh. Um, talking about tough yarns, I just saw a, I think it was Bag of Crochet. She was talking about the new Mainstay, Mainstay, Walmart brand. I think it was Mainstay. And that the old ones, I never really used either because they were rough. They were made in China and they were a little scratchy. Yeah. Um, but the new ones and were from Turkey, made in Turkey, and they were softer. And so I decided when I was at Walmart, I'd check that out. And yes, uh, we had about three colors that were actually made in Turkey. The other ones were still China. And you could visually see a difference. One was more shiny. The ones from Turkey was like it had a shinier. Um, the other one was more dull. And you could see the, the fibers in it. The fibers of the new mainstay is more smooth. Uh, the old ones are real rough and fuzzy. 
and I felt them and there is a big difference. So I actually got from Walmart and I, oh, I do have it. Hold on. I have bags everywhere of yarn. <laughs> um, if I can open it. I bought it in pink. See, I don't know if you can see. Oops. Uh, if it says made in Turkey, if you can see made in Turkey. Anyway, um, they are measurably softer. You could just feel it. So I actually bought one because I do a lot of baby blankets to donate. And I was going to try it to see if it is soft enough after I work it up to actually donate for babies. If not, then, I mean, this would be great for scarves and stuff. But I'm going to see. And she says it actually is easier to crochet with. So I am definitely going to try that and see if it's true. Um, I do have one old one of Mainstay. And I just didn't like it because it was. It was scratchy. Oh, can't get it back in here. Okay, forget that. All right. So the next thing. Oh, I... I bought some stuff and Wal I, I live in a small city. It has Walmart. It doesn't have Hobby Lobby. It doesn't have Michaels. It doesn't have Joanne. Um, if I want to go to Joanne, I have to go to the next big city that way. If I want to go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby, I need to go to the next big city that way. I'm about 30, 35 minutes away. So it's pretty much Walmart and that's it. For my for my local store, so I buy a lot of um, so I buy a lot of yarn on on um, online, you know, and like the Premier, I'm really getting into that. I sort of like the you know I like the quality of the Premier yarns, uh, but I I also buy to deliver in my Walmart. I'll buy it from Walmart.com and have it delivered. Well, they had this at my Walmart, and I do a lot of the the cotton because of the things I'm crocheting. And normally at my Walmart, it's $8.44. And this is just the peaches and cream. Um, this is a really pretty color too, I love this. Um, this is chocolate milk, ooh. <laughs> um, and it's usually $8.44. But on walmart.com, we actually had it and I found it for $7.97. So it saved like 50 cents, something like that. But I could have it delivered to my store. But since my store already had it in stock, I just went and picked it up. So instead of paying the $8.44, you buy it online and even though it doesn't ship to your store, I go pick it up, you know, the same day and I got it for $7.97. So that's something to think about because uh, not all Walmarts do their clearance the same at the same time and the same amount. And I've noticed that because a lot of people will have a Walmart haul and they'll say, oh, I got this for this and this for this. And guess what? Mine wasn't. Um, we don't have like a big, we have a, a aisle of yarn, but we don't have a lot of the varieties that they offer and the discounts, they really don't do that much. But anyway, so I decided to check out other things and I actually found the Mandala and, and of course it's the Lion brand. Um, this one is called Spirit. And if you can see, I just loved it. I thought it was gorgeous. Uh, but I want to start making hats and stuff um, for next winter and scarves. And I just thought, um, I never really used the Mandela before or Mandala. Um, so I wanted to get a couple tried out. So this is a little thinner than, yeah, it's a number three weight um, that I use, than I used. But I thought, oh, it'd be really pretty or maybe a, or maybe a, a shawl. So this, at my store, they had it in stock, is $4.97. Online, again, it's $3.99, so almost a dollar difference. And I ordered it the same time, and I went and picked it up the same day. 
so it's just something to think about if you see something on walmart.com that is on sale and your walmart has it get it online and you know they just go pick it off the they it's the same thing they go pick it off the shelf and then when you come pick it up you go to your pickup and pick it up for a dollar cheaper great and then some of them if you don't have it shipped and you go pick it up at your walmart they even give you a discount off of that awesome so i actually picked up two of those the only thing i don't like though is of course they don't have the same center uh, i like to have the same centers but you know what if, if i do like one hat and one hat it doesn't matter or you know one scarf one scarf that's fine well now they had another one that i found and this is mandala baby and it is pixie hollow you can see the pretty colors isn't that gorgeous and i only got one of these and i'm regretting not getting more because it's really really pretty but this is also a number three weight yarn and it's really soft and this one again was on my shelf at walmart four dollars and 97 cents i got it for four dollars so for just go going and picking it up and ordering online i saved 97 cents and if you have a bunch of these i mean just think for a project how much you could save so check that out go to walmart.com and see if they have prices on there different than your walmart and then order and of course they have and i haven't ordered it yet but they have like woolies that's at walmart.com where you buy three of them and it's like ten dollars ten dollars and something and i am going to do that and uh, get that in there because I was like oh yeah because they're like normally $4.97 or something each and you get three of them for like $10.97 or it is really a good deal um, another thing and I don't have any in front of me but I went to Michaels and I bought a bunch of the little you know like peaches and cream sugar and cream uh, cotton 100% cotton um, and they were on sale two by two get one free so instead of being 209 they were like a dollar 38 37 something like that each which is pretty good yeah so i went ahead and got a bunch of those um and i'm gonna use those you know for all the stuff that i'm making so that is my acquisitions i'm i ordered some little cakes from premier dk colors and they are supposed to be coming sometime this week or the beginning of next week. They have been shipped, I know that. So that is all my stuff that, oh, and <laughs> I went to Michael's and was looking, I've never had one of these. It's one of those little, those little measuring tape measures. Um. And they were like four or five dollars and I went to Walmart and they were like a dollar eighty eight so cheap but I love it I've been playing with it and I have all my little crochet hooks and my scissors and stuff this I am a big 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 Harry Potter fan and this was over where the um, decorations for like parties and stuff was and it was, I think, a pencil case, but it is perfect to hold whatever project I'm working on. I stick the crochet hooks and the, you know, my scissors, my little bitty scissors fit in here. So I'm loving that. Another thing I am starting, and I started one, but I ripped it out because I want to start on another yarn. I watched a video on how to do Tunisian crocheting never tried it before had one of these in my in my stash stuff with my yarn I don't know where I got it somebody must have gave it to me and I tried to do it and it's not as fast as crocheting but it's fun and I think I could definitely do it so I might do um, some Tunisian crochet when I get a few minutes chance you know I thought it would be more like knitting which it's not it's not really you know like knitting no, not really except it's on here that's the only thing um so I still want to give knitting a try again 
but I'm gonna attempt the Tunisian crochet and see how that goes. Um, my mom and my grandma has never done the Tunisian crochet, so it's something new. So uh, yeah, if I do a little project, I'll show you how it's going. Um, but I followed the video. I think it was Jade in, Jade in Stitches. I think that's who it was that I was following. It was an older video. But she was a very good teacher and it seems easy. So we are definitely gonna do that. Um, oh, I found something else at Walmart. It was a crochet 12 month um, calendar, crochet planner. And I've seen these, you know, last year, but now in my Walmart, they were on clearance for $3. So I was thinking, I wasn't gonna pay the full price, but I was like, for $3, I'll get it. And it's sort of neat. Um, you could probably do the same thing and make your own. You know, I, I've done a binder like that before. But it's neat, they give you a little plastic um, thing that you could put something in, whether it's patterns or maybe crochet hook or stitch markers, I don't know, whatever. And in there, what I really like is this reference, and they have a thing about the tools, and it's basically just like advertising their tools, you know. <laughs> Um, but I really like this. This is weights, sizes, and equivalents. And it's the metric equivalents. Uh, crochet. I love this because sometimes I watch other people and they don't say like a size J, you know, hook or a size I. They give it in, um, millimeters. So a five millimeter, you know, would be a size H. So that's great. They also give you the little chart about the si the weighting of the weight of your yarn, which I love that because, you know, some things that I've never, like sock and fingering weight, I've never actually used before. So it's, it's making me think maybe I want to do something like that. Abbreviations. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And... I do not read charts. I read very, very basic charts, but they actually give you the symbols for reading charts, which is great to know. Now you can get all this stuff off the internet and print it out and put it in a binder. Then they have projects and they give you, like here's works in progress and the list and when you, when you check them off, they give you graph pages. Um, which is great, especially if you're doing like corner to corner and planning something out. And then you get a few of these little crochet projects. You could write down, you know, what the project is, uh, swatches to do, your hook size, what yarn you're using. And those are all really neat. I wish they would have put more of these in. And then they do every month. They give you, it's empty, so you can add in your own, like this is February. You can use it for any year. But this you could just, you know, use a regular planner for. But anyway, I just thought I'd pick that up. I probably won't start with January, I'll probably start with February, but it's a great way for me to keep on track of everything I wanna do, um, you know, for the upcoming, you know, craft fairs and things like that. So I got that for $3, so check out Walmart um, and see if yours is on clearance. They also had one for knitting, which is pretty neat. And finally, you know, the tip I wanted to give is I love my digital scale. Um, this is just a cheap digital scale. I have had it for years, and I think I got it at Walmart. It wasn't that much. But I love using my digital scale uh, when I'm doing crochet projects. Um, some of the things that I use it for is like if I'm going to, sorry, I keep, I have stuff on the floor. Like if I do like a little, a little project and I have a little bit of yarn left over, I will weigh my finished project to see if I can get one more out of there. You know, if I have enough scrap to be able to make one more. And this has helped me so much 
so that I don't start a project and only get up to like this row right here and I run out and I'm like, oh man, just go and see, weigh up your project, weigh your yarn. It's not 100%, but it's pretty accurate. Um, I do the same thing for like baby blankets. Um, because I, I told you I do um, a lot of to give away. So I might have little a little bit of yarn um, for maybe half of a blanket. Well, then I can weigh and see how much I have in one color and how much I might have in another color to be able to figure out how many stripes I want to put in to make sure that, that both of those add up to whatever the blanket weight is. And when I do projects, especially new projects, I write down the weight of what it's finished, when it's finished and what yarn and what hook size, because that will all be affected. But I know that I can just weigh, you know, whatever spare yarn I have to see if I have enough for the project. I also use my digital scale when I make a bigger project. Like if I'm going to make an affigan or a blanket and I want to know how many spools, not spools, skeins of uh, yarn I need, sometimes I will stitch up maybe, maybe a, a six inch, you know, maybe less, maybe a two inch, whatever, but maybe like six inches. And if I want to do a project that's 36 inches, I can do a six inch strip, weigh it out, multiply it by six and get an idea of how many yards of yarn I need. And then that way, if I need to order and go and order or buy another skein, I know ahead of time before they run out. Um, I also use that in corner to corner because if you have a set amount of crocheting yarn and say you, you, you know, you get started in the corner and you move up, uh, you can measure when you get to wherever you need to get off uh, to start decreasing because I usually do for the baby blankets I usually do squares you can weigh and weigh how much yarn you have and it you know when it gets a little less than half uh, when your thing weighs a little bit less than half then you know you need to start turning around or if you don't have enough for the project, you know when to add in the stripes. So um, you can weigh your yarn and say you only have, I don't even know, say five ounces. But you need seven ounces to do a nice corner to corner blanket. Then you can add in, say, two ounces of a white or another color. So I measure myself until I get to, if I have five ounces of the yarn, two and a half or a little less, maybe about, you know, 2.4 ounces. Um, measure myself until I get to that point, then add in the uh, stripe of, say, white, two ounces of that, and then finish off and know that I have enough to finish off. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> in my mind, it makes sense. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but in my mind it does. Um, another thing you can do is I will, when I'm finished with a project, like say Super Saver or something, um, the, the Red Heart Super Saver, I always re-cake my yarn um, into a smaller little cake instead of having, you know, floppy you know, skeins, because you use some of the inside. I recake it, and then I can weigh it and put down um, what the weight is, and I can also figure out with that weight how many yards that would be, and that would give me an idea, like if I go to pick it up later, um, oh, do I, I wonder if I have enough for a, you know, scarf, or I wonder if I have enough, you know, to add in, you know, for half of a hat or something. Um, then you know because you can list your yards, yardage. So that is just some of the things that I use my digital scale for. And uh, I'm sure the season crocheters probably do it all the time, but it's something I came across, oh, a couple years ago, and I was like, hey, that's a good idea because I had all this spare yarn and I wasn't sure how much 
it was in there. And you know, when you use a skein, it goes from the middle, you know, like the Red Heart Super Saver. And you might not think you have as much yarn as you have because it's pulling from the middle, which goes faster. And then the outside um, where, you know, when you pull it. <laughs> Well, the outside of it, you might think, oh, well, that I've already used half a skein, but it might actually be you only used a quarter of the skein. So weighing it is a really good thing. Anyway, I cannot believe it's been 35 minutes of me jabbing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, anyway, I just wanted to show you my works in progress and some of my, my little bitty finished projects. Um, finished objects. I'm still working on my granddaughter's blanket and I, it's just, I love it. I'm just probably because I could just imagine it on her bed and her, you know, using it for years and years and yeah. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share and I'm hoping everybody is having a good day and I hope you have a great week and I hope you finish all your projects you need to finish this week. I know I'm going to really be hustling because I have a few projects in the works that I want to finish, plus a cake, plus cupcakes. Oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, uh, that's it for today. And I guess this was a podcast. Not sure. <laughs> but anyway, and somebody had asked also about um, my heart pattern sorry <laughs> I'm flopping all over um the heart pattern I used and I just got it off the internet it was um some pattern place it was a free pattern but I just googled heart corner to corner and it was actually a dishcloth pattern that I used and I used a bigger hook because I wanted I didn't want them to be tiny. I wanted to be like nine and a half, I think was the finished squares, nine and a half by nine and a half. Uh, so I think I used an I, I think it's an I or a J hook. I don't remember. But anyway, if you just Google um, heart corner to corner dishcloth uh, or washcloth, I think it's washcloth, um, you should be able to find it. And it was neat because it gave you the graph and it also gave you the word instructions. And you know, let me grab it. Uh, I sort of loved the word instructions. I tried the graph before and I never even finished. But this one was really nice. Oh, it is crochetzone.com. It's on another site too, but this was the one I actually but I like the words. And I am definitely gonna do the words from now on if they offer it instead of the little graph. But anyway, I will talk to y'all later and that's it for the week and I'll see you hopefully next week. And I will take a few pictures of my finished affigan, well, my finished twin size bed spread whatever you want to call it, of my granddaughters when it's finished because I am going to be giving it to her this weekend. So I will see y'all later and y'all have a good week and talk to you later. Bye-bye.